Hi gang, Scott Davenport here. In this video, we'll take a look at the antique filter in Photo Raw 2021. Uh, really quick, if you like videos like this, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you don't miss any. And if you're thinking about adding Photo Raw to your toolkit, check the show notes. There's links down there, won't cost anything extra. Matter of fact, it might save you some money. There's a offer code down there you can use on your purchase. So the antique filter, it is what you think it is. It adds an antique kind of faded look to a photo. Uh, it can be useful if you're trying to simulate an older film look or if you're uh, doing some restoration of photos, it's already kind of got that antique thing. Some of the color tinting in here is pretty interesting. I wanna walk you through the sliders that are in this filter. So in the effects module, hit add filter, we'll choose antique. And you can tell right away, we get some sort of color tinting. There's a bit of grain that's added to the photo. And the antique filter is going after that kind of look, trying to simulate an old photo you might find in a shoebox. It's been exposed to sunlight a little bit too long, maybe, or the, you know, the colors have faded. Probably we shot on film, so it's got grain. You've got control over all these things. Uh, I'll show you the main controls, but then I wanna point out a couple of things with the filter that uh, I like to do, because some of the tinting might be a little bit strong. You've got these various styles here. Those are here, you can hover over them. And what a style is doing is if I pick red, for example, we'll see the different sliders get updated automatically. So these are like uh, styles change the sliders that are within this filter only. There are many more options in color where you can see different treatments. Okay, like Istanbul's a very uh, you know muted black and white. Marseille is almost like your sepia tone. And you know the, the names, it's always hard to name these things. So you just hover over them, figure out what you like, what you don't like. Uh, let me stick with uh, Istanbul. I like that look for this photo. Now brightness controls how bright or how dark that particular uh, tinting is. And you can see, since this is a, somewhat of a naturally vignetted photo, as I make things darker, the dark clouds and the dark trees, those are getting much darker. It's just overall brightness or darkness of the photo. I'll keep this very moody. Fade is the opposite. Fade is like you had this exposed to sunlight too much and all the shadows got washed out, right? So I could really make this almost, it's almost like adding fog in a sense. That's one other interesting side use of the antique filter. If you're not getting the look you want out of say the weather filter, you can play around with the fade. Saturation's interesting. So you see saturation's been desaturated here. This is adjusting the saturation of the photo itself. It's not the color tint that you've added with Antique. It's the photo itself or really the results of all of your previous processing up to the Antique filter. You're changing the saturation of those underlying tones. If I push this really far, you can see a lot of those purples and blues that I had in that photo are being pushed back through. So if you've lost too much color to the antique filter, you can push some of that back in with the saturation slider. And you end up with you know, very, very interesting, very unique mixes of color. Film grain, pretty straightforward. You have amount, you have size. I'm not a huge fan of grain. Um, and if and when I do add it, I tend to use the dedicated film grain filter because you have some more choices for simulating actual film stock. But for an antique look, it makes sense to have some sort of grain, but I'll back it off to, uh, to a bit, just make it a little bit uh, less obvious. Now, a few things about the antique slider. This can be uh, somewhat of a strong look, so certainly visit your opacity slider overall. You don't have to do things at full strength. You can back it off and start inching it back up until you like what you see. This is where you might be using antique as a stylistic choice. You want to use it for you know, a different kind of color tinting. The other thing I'll advise is visit the blending options in the gear menu. You have options to protect various regions and things like I don't want the highlights to take too much of that antique or in this case maybe the shadows. I can, I can back this off from the shadows some so I'm not losing some of the intricate detail there. These controls are really nice to use. You don't have to do masking. There's intelligence behind them. It's looking at the tones of the image to figure out what areas to protect. So I'll add it up. Let's take a look uh, before that antique and after. It's certainly quite a different photo. It has a very different mood to it, but that is the antique filter. Hope you enjoyed the video. Got questions? Go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.